But we see all kinds of personalities, all kinds of emotions coming out in Paul's letters. Just a, a quick, short review. We see a joyful side in Paul as he writes to the same Philippian church we read today. He says that we sing this song all the time, don't we? Rejoice in the Lord always. And I say rejoice, Philippians 4.4. 4. There's an angry side. Some of the letters address conflicts and things that the congregations are doing that will cause them to perish, that are not following in the way that they should. And so he writes to the Galatian, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and turning to a different gospel. Galatians 1.6 He's conciliatory. Uh, the Corinthian church, uh, for a time, was dealing with significant conflict in their congregation. And he says to them, agree with one another. This is not a request. Agree with one another. Live in peace. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. He had a humble side. It's hard to imagine Paul humble, but he certainly was in numerous places. Philippians, though, he encourages us and them. Had the mind of Christ, who humbled himself and became a servant. Philippians 2 5. And then there is this thankful side, as part of our scripture passage today. This letter to Philippians, one of Paul's many correspondences, and he says to the church in Philippi, I thank my God and all my remembrances of you, always in every prayer of mine for you making my prayer with joy, thankful for your partnership in the gospel. While many of Paul's correspondences have some unique qualities, one of the overarching, one of the umbrella feelings that come out in almost all of Paul's writing, usually at the beginning and at the end of his communication, is a spirit of thankfulness. Through all this man's many varied attitudes, the feeling to which he invariably returned was thankfulness. It's as though it was the foundation of his faith, the foundation of everything else. Moses, in the story we heard today that was read from Deuteronomy chapter 8, he is uh, gathering the people for him one of the last times, if not the last time. They're on the east side of the Jordan River, and today what we call the country of Jordan. They're preparing to cross over the Jordan. Most people don't know, but the Jordan was parted much the way the, same, the Red Sea was. And the people went into Israel and uh, took the promised land. But just before they did that, Paul felt like uh, Moses. Moses didn't do that with them. He stayed on the east side. He did not enter the promised land. That was part of the... Uh, uh, of what he suffered when he showed a little lack of faith as a leader of the people of Israel. So it, these were his last words. Oftentimes the last words we have to share with people are the most important. And so this sermon in chapter 8 uh, is there. The people have wandered through the wilderness, the Sinai wilderness. And he says this. Will the wealth that you are about to receive make you haughty or will it make you thankful in essence that's what the message was about <laughs> those are the two major options that we're often faced with will it cause your hearts to be lifted up above your brothers and sisters so that you consider yourself better than they are or will it cause you to bow down on your knees each day to give thanks to god who has given us all our blessings and all our wealth. Will it cause your hearts to be puffed up? Or will it cause our hearts to know the source from which our blessings have come? Choose. You have to choose. Moses says, choose thankfulness. As I study the Bible over the years, I find this to be central message from beginning to end. Yes, there are a great many other emotions in us, personality quirks, ways that we are, but the Bible urges within us thankfulness. 
as a foundation. If we can be that kind of people, then a great many of our problems will take care of themselves. As a minister of pastoral care, I was I would go to this woman's house for therapy. She didn't know that she was a therapist. She was just a member of the church who was having problems, and I was doing pastoral call. She didn't know she was my therapist. And some of you perhaps know people like this. Her name is Dorothy. And Dorothy had a difficult life. Um, she had a number of struggles throughout her life. Her husband had died. She was currently wrestling with a number of physical problems. Those that were close to her had some significant mental, medical issues. And she would not ignore these. Uh, she would let me know what's going on. She wasn't secretive. But she would let me know what was going on. But that's not where her heart stayed. That's not where she dwelt. And I used to just love to be in her presence because she had an, an aura of thankfulness, an aura of a person who has been blessed. She would tell me what happened, and uh, there was a fundamental uh, sense that insisted, it, it just insisted on coming out, on emerging from every pore of her body. I, you know these people. They're, they're the people that we like to spend time with, not the people we are looking at our watch saying, oh, I gotta go. These are the people that you're drawn to because somehow they make you feel better and or they even have the power to make you a better person. It caused Dorothy uh, to kind of take on a, a soft glow, I think, uh, perhaps even a godly thing, no matter what. She radiated she radiated solidity and wholeness no matter what. And you can tell she'd been doing it all her life because it was just so absolutely genuine and natural and unforced. You and I see a lot of laudable traits in people. We see integrity and courage, wisdom, loyalty, things like this. But you know, for me, if there was a single personality trait I could copy that I could like have standing out as a, a banner bearer in front of me that others would see, it would be this one of thankfulness. The genuine awareness that I live all of my life in enormous debt to the giver of all good things. It tends to be my habit, um, and I do this because I don't want you to go home and you're in the car going home, and I don't want you to talk about whether the sermon was good or whether the guy looked good or not, you know, and give me critique. So I give the congregations I talk to uh, homework. So you're going to have homework. So when you go home, you don't talk about me and how good or bad the sermon was. You, you start talking about your homework with whoever you're with. So here's our homework for this week. And I'm back in two weeks. So, you know, I can like check to see if you've done some of this homework. I want you to take some time this week. Because I think we're bidden in the scripture passage today to do so. I want you to get rid of the televisions and the telephones and the cell phones and stop tweeting and texting and make a little space for yourself. And I want you to take stock of the, especially the people, but also the situation you may find yourself in that you are thankful for. Perhaps even like make a hard copy. If you're a list maker, you'll love this homework. Make a list. Make a list of the people and things that you are truly grateful for. And I guarantee you that as you do that, you can get a smile on your face. And the longer you do that, and the more sincerely you do that, pretty soon that smile is going to get bigger. And it's not going to only be on your face, but it's going to be in your heart. And turn that into a prayer of thanksgiving when you're done. And thank the source that is the giver of those wonderful blessings in your life. It has been said that you can be a thankful person and not be a Christian. But I believe it is utterly impossible to be a Christian without being a thankful person. 
My great wish for you and for this congregation that as you go in and out the doors of this sanctuary, that you would become more and more a people of appreciation, a people of thankfulness, a people who are enter these sanctuary doors each Sunday morning, not wanting to beg God for certain things or to complain about what's going on in your life, but wanting to say with a resounding thank you because it's welling up from inside your hearts and refuses to be kept quiet. Thank you for listening. Amen.